ब्रह्मनाथ ओ शांति 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 स्वस्थ हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द थ्री डोमेन्स ऑफ लाइफ वी डिस्कस्ड दैट द डोमेन्स मीन्स व्हाट it is the breakdown of the living organisms in general form later we discuss that the three domains are your first one is your the archaea then the bacteria and last one is your eukarya the archaea and the bacteria is included under the prokaryotes <coughs> as they do not have a prominent nucleus which is enveloped by the nuclear membrane and also they lack the membrane bound cell organelle okay and the eukarya is included under the eukaryotes as in the eukaryotes the prominent nucleus is being seen <coughs> the cell membrane the membrane bound organelles are being seen okay so this is about the general idea the three domains like we discussed next we discussed that the three domains of life was proposed by the carl us okay next we discussed the some general points of the archaea and we, in which we discussed that the archaea it is uh, it includes it uh, comes under the prokaryotes in which prominent nucleus is absent the it lacks the membrane bound cell organelles next we discuss that the archaea it is the known as also the extremophiles in extremophiles means what means means the we can say it can survive high temperature it can survive the high acidic condition high salt concentration okay next we discuss the membrane of the archaea <coughs> composed of the branched hydrocarbon attached to the glycerol by the means of ether linkage next the cell wall does not have the peptidoglycan okay next in the bacteria we discuss so many general points such as your in the case of the bacteria it is also included under the prokaryote and also it does not have any uh, prominent nucleus or membrane bound organelles or cell organelles are not present next the bacteria <coughs> in the case of the bacteria the membrane composed of we can say the unbranched fatty acids attached to the glycerol by the means of the ester linkage okay and the cell wall contains the peptidoglycan okay today we discuss the our third domain of life that is your eukarya okay the third domain of life that is your eukarya okay so first point the eukarya we can simply say that the eukarya or the eukaryotes okay because it these are the eukaryotes because prominent nucleus is present membrane bound cell organelles are present such as your uh, ribosome endoplasmic reticulum the okay <coughs> so so many mitochondria so many cell organelles are present so first point we can write these are the <coughs> these are the eukaryotes these are the eukaryotes which have which have a prominent <coughs> nucleus then membrane bound cell organelles membrane bound cell organelles are also present are also present okay as it is included under the under the eukaryotes obviously <coughs> the uh, the prominent nucleus is present so the membrane bound uh, the cell organelles are present such as your ribosome then the endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria is <coughs> etc <etcetera. coughs> next next point the membrane of the eukaryotes or the eukarya simply composed of same as that of the bacteria it composed of the unbranched fatty acid chain 
attached to the glycerol by the means of the ester linkage. <coughs> Membrane <coughs> composed of uh, we can say the unbranched fatty acid attached to attached to <coughs> the glycerol by the means of ester linkage by the means of ester <coughs> linkage okay means as we discussed the membranes in the case of the archaea and the bacteria, archaea is just now as I told that it consists of the branched hydrocarbon attached to the glycerol by the means of ether linkage. Then in the case of bacteria, unbranched fatty acids attached to the glycerol by the means of ester linkage. In the case of the eukaryote also, the membrane composed of unbranched fatty acid attached to the glycerol by the means of ester linkage. Okay. The unbranched fatty acid attached to the glycerol by the means of ester linkage. Next point. <coughs> in the case of the eukaryotes, all the eukaryotes does not have cell wall, but those have the cell wall, they do not have the peptidoglycan. Next point. <coughs> all the eukaryotes does not have the cell wall, but those have the cell wall, <coughs> the cell wall lacks the peptidoglycan. Okay. All the eukaryotes does not have cell wall. But those have the cell wall, they will lack the peptidoglycan. Okay. Next. <coughs> the eukaryotes are resistant to the antibacterial antibiotics. Okay. Antibi to the traditional antibacterial antibiotics, but are sensitive to the antibiotics which affect the to the obviously to the eukarya. These are resistance resistant to the traditional antibacterial antibiotics. Okay, but are sensitive <coughs> to the what are sensitive to the we can say to the antibiotics which affect which affect the eukarya okay means simply these are resistance means they don't have any impact means uh, if the uh, we can say the traditional uh, the antibacterial antibi antibiotic such as your turmeric neem is being applied but it is sensitive to the antibiotics obviously it is sensitive sensitive to the antibiotics which affect the eukarya means those antibiotics which affect the eukarya it is sensitive to those but it is not sensitive or we can say it is resistant to the traditional antibacterial antibiotic okay last point Obviously, the common point is the rRNA point. It has <coughs> the unique rRNA which is different from the archae and the bacteria okay so these are your some general points of the eukaryotes or eukarya <coughs> eukarya simply is also served as the eukaryotes 
these are the eukaryotes in which prominent nucleus is present in which the we can say the membrane bound cell organelles are present such as ribosome uh, golgi complex endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria okay <coughs> next these are the eukaryotes which have the prominent nucleus membrane bound cell organelles are also present next the membrane composed of unbranched fatty acids attached to the glycerol by the means of ester linkage next point all the eukaryotes does not have the cell wall but those have the cell wall lacks the peptidoglycan okay lacks the peptidoglycan these are resistant to the traditional antibacterial antibiotics but are sensitive to the antibiotics which affect the eukaryote <coughs> and last one it have the unique rrna which is different from the rk and the bacteria okay so to as of now we discussed in the previous class we discussed the two domains that is your rk which is the primitive and the ancient form of the we can say that uh, the domain or the oldest domain or the first domain next we discuss the bacteria now we discuss the eukarya which is the third domain of the life okay domain means what we discussed that the whole life any life that is present on this planet is categorized simply into these three categories either it will be archaea either it will be bacteria or either it will come under the eukarya or we can say the eukaryotes okay so please note down the eukarya or the eukaryotes okay please note down now we'll discuss the four kingdom that is included under the eukaryotes or the we can say the eukarya except we know the five kingdom classification monera protista fungi plantae animalia monera monera excepting or excluding the monera remaining four means the protista fungi then the plantae animalia those four are being included under the eukaryotes okay and the monera is being included under the prokaryotes so first we'll discuss the protista then the fungi then the plantae then the animalia uh, in our case so the protista these includes simple and unicellular organisms these includes simple and unicellular organisms okay common examples are slime molds algae okay then the protozoans <coughs> common protozoan is your amoeba so such like okay means the simple <coughs> unicellular eukaryotic cells eukaryotes are we can say it is include under the protista okay the simple and unicellular eukaryotes are included under the protista next we'll discuss the fungi these are also the unicellular organisms but some are also multicellular organisms these are unicellular but some are multicellular multicellular okay next next point in the case of the fungi the cell wall is present cell wall is present <coughs> next in the case of the fungi as we know that the as we discussed in the cellular organization that the group of similar cells forms the tissue but in the case of the fungi as it may be it is generally unicellular but it may be also multicellular but in the case of the multicellular the cells are not organized into tissue okay because for organization of the tissue there is a proper organization must be there okay some properties should match so that they could form a tissue but in the case of the fungi the cells never make or we can say cells are not organized into tissue so your second, next point <coughs> cells are not 
organized into tissue okay next they don't carry out the photosynthesis process they don't carry out photosynthesis okay and they get the nutrition by the help of the absorption they get the nutrition by the absorption <coughs> by the absorption okay means to absorb by absorbing it gets the nutrition common examples are uh, your most common <coughs> that is your mushroom okay next your sac fungi yeast etc okay <coughs> so in the fungi we discuss these are the unicellular but some are also multicellular but in the case of the fungi the cells are <coughs> never organized into tissue and also they don't carry out the photosynthesis process and they get the nutrition by the absorption examples are mushroom sac fungi yeast etc next the plantae kingdom means obviously you can relate that these are included so the includes the plants first point these are the multicellular organisms multicellular organisms okay then the presence of cell wall presence of cell wall okay they carry out the photosynthesis in this the cells are organized into tissue <coughs> cells are organized into tissue okay means in this the proper way the arrangement is done or we can say the organization is done of the cell to form the tissue next photosynthesis process is being carried out photosynthesis process okay in which the glucose means the food is formed photosynthesis process is carried out due to the presence of sunlight carried out <coughs> photosynthesis process is carried out in this okay next uh, next point we can uh, also write they also get the nutrition by the absorption they get the nutrition <coughs> by the absorption okay and so common examples are mo any plant you can take but here we'll uh, can write the mosses and the ferns mosses and ferns etc also you can write okay next last one is the animalia kingdom means what our case kingdom animalia or in which the animals are being or we can say or uh, in our case next these are simply multicellular organisms obviously you know multicellular organisms okay next we can write uh, <coughs> in this the cells are organized into tissue cells are organized into tissue okay and last point uh, they get the nutrition by the means of the uh, ingestion okay they get their nutrition they get their nutrition by ingestion ingestion means simply we can say engulfing how we eat the food we engulf the food okay that is the mode of the getting our nutrition so 
plants get the nutrition by absorbing means it absorbs okay but the animalia kingdom it get the nutrition by simply engulfing the food okay that is known as your ingestion common examples you can take any animals here we can take the insects the worms the vertebrates vertebrates don't confuse about what are the vertebrates etc vertebrates means the presence of the vertebral column okay in our case also we will read in detail about all those things so don't worry about that don't means um, don't confuse about the what is the hair vertebrates and all that simply we'll uh, discuss in our f uh, future classes as of now you remember only the examples vertebrates etc okay <coughs> so the eukarya or the eukaryotes first we discuss the general points in which if it comes as a short notes you can write only up to in the first in the previous slide we, what we have discussed that about the eukarya some general points that you will write in your 2.5 short notes uh, question it is uh, if it come in your exam but this is your extra points means it includes the various four kingdoms such as your we said as the protista fungi plantae and the animalia <coughs> Protista, this includes as we said the simple and the unicellular organisms. Common examples are your slime molds, algae, protozoans, amoeba, etc. Fungi, these are your unicellular uh, organisms, but some are also multi multicellular. But in this case, the cells are not organized into tissue. Okay, cell wall is present. Okay, S cell are not organized into tissue cells are not in tissue they don't carry out the photosynthesis cell wall is present and they get the nutrition by the absorption example mushroom sac fungi yeast okay you can also write the mold okay <coughs> slime mold mold different then the plant care plant care kingdom these are the multicellular organisms presence of we can say the cell wall <coughs> here you write another point in the animalia cell wall is absent cell wall is absent okay so in the plantae kingdom the multicellular organisms presence of the cell wall cells are organized into tissue photosynthesis process is being carried out and they get also nutrition by the absorption common example mosses and the ferns etc in the animal kingdom multicellular organisms but the cell wall is absent in the plantae cell wall is present in the animalia means uh, in our case cell wall is absent next the cells are organized into tissue they get their nutrition by the ingestion means engulfing the food and the common examples are insect worms vertebrates etc vertebrates means presence of vertebral column as in our case okay so as of now we discussed the four kingdom that includes under the eukaryote okay so as of now we completely discussed the three domains of the life archaea bacteria eukarya uh, we discussed some general points which is sufficient for a 2.5 marks and then we discuss the complete kingdom that is involved under the eukaryotes okay please note down so now we'll discuss the systematics and the taxonomy now for uh, in the uh, in the previous we discussed about the three domains of life now we will discuss the systematic and the taxonomy. Simply, systematic means nothing but the systemic arrangement of the organism. Simple. And the systemic term is derived from the word called the systema. Systema means systemic arrangement of living organisms. Okay, simple system means systemic arrangement of the living organisms. So, it can be defined, it can be defined as a kind of, as a kind and the diversification, diversification among the living organisms <coughs> based on their comparative and evolutionary relationship based on their comparative and evolutionary 
evolutionary relationships. Okay. Means what? Means the organisms, means all the living organisms are arranged in a systemic way. Means a particular organism is kept under a particular category. Another organism is kept under a particular category. Okay. Suppose, suppose for example, I am telling. Suppose this is one organism. It has various characteristics. Okay. Suppose this one is also an organism. This has various category. But this one is another organism or another category in which these two organisms comes. So, if we will study this characteristics of this uh, category, then obviously we will have a common idea about these categories or, or the, these organisms. Okay, and which by which also we can discuss obviously that these two may have arrived from this or they have the evolutionary relationship or those uh, these organisms may have come from this ancestors. Okay, so simply we can tell that the systematics helps or give us idea about the systemic arrangement of the living organisms. Okay, <coughs> the term systematics was first used by Carlos Linnaeus in his book in his book Systeme Nature his book Systeme Nature and the Carlos Linnaeus is also known as your father of taxonomy Carlos Linnaeus is known as father of taxonomy. Okay. <coughs> now we will discuss the new systematics. So, what is the term new systematics? See, systematics we discussed that it is the systemic arrangement of the organisms in which we discussed means how the organisms are being categorized or kept under a such a, under a particular category or classification. So that we can could have a proper knowledge or proper data about the organisms. New systematic means it is an advanced form of the systematics by which we can have a more clear data or we can have a clear uh, complete uh, more clear data about the evolutionary relationship means a organism may came uh, may have came from the uh, previous or we can say some another ancestors so that we have a clear idea about the ancestors. So in this the new systematics helps us to have a more clear idea as compared to the systematics. So, the term new systematics was first used by or the term first used by the J. Huxley in the year 1940. This term was used by J. Huxley in the year 1940. Okay. And the new systematics includes or we can say it considers the ecology, the biochemistry, okay, the genetics, the physiology, okay, cytology, etc. Okay. So, the new systematics is being considered or we can say it is being discussed or being researched on the basis of the means the ecology means in which habitat or environment the uh, does the organisms are living and the basis of the biochemistry means the their uh, chemical reaction that take place in their body or we can say their composition their genetics means their genetic materials okay means having the inheritance or uh, discussing on their inheritance also we can have a complete idea then the physiology means their various physiological activities such as digestion excretion respiration next cytology you know the study of the cell so 
in the systematics see simply see systematic means the arrangement of the or we can say the systemic arrangement of the organisms or living organisms in which we have a complete idea that under this category particular organisms are there under this category particular organisms are there under this category these two organisms are coming so that if we will teach or if we will study about this organism we can have a complete idea or an overall idea of these two organisms also that also uh, mean that also uh, tells us that these two organisms are somehow came from this ancestors okay common example i'll give you such as your tiger and lion as we discussed in the previous class tiger the uh, the scientific name is your panthera tigris lion the scientific name is your panthera leo as they both have the genus name same obviously it may be considered that the tiger and the lion must have came from a common ancestor okay this is a common example means not in a means in a uh, in some, uh, before some two year three year or four years or 10 years it may have come it may take millions of years okay but it it can be said that as the tiger and the lion have the same genus may might have it have it may it may be that these two the tiger and the lion may have come from a common ancestor okay so by this means by studying about the tiger characteristics by studying about the lion characteristics we have the distinct characteristics but if we we'll discuss the complete the the, the genus panthera the panthera genus if we will discuss then we have a overall idea about the tiger also overall idea about, about the lion also okay so like this the systemic arrangement of the living organism so uh, in systematic means it can be defined as a kind of diversification among the living organisms or you can simply write kind and diversity among the living organism based on their comparative evolutionary relationship means we can study them and have a complete idea means by how they are being evaluated or means how they know means the their ancestors are how we like or we can say that and they came from uh, who they, they are how, how the ancestors should look like okay what are, what should be their characteristics what should be their common characteristics of the ancestors okay next the term systematic was first used by carlos linnaeus in his book called the systema natura and also the carlos linnaeus is known as the father of taxonomy and after that the new systematic came this term was used by the j huxley in the 1940 and the new systematic means the advanced form of the systematic it considers various other factors such as your ecology means the habitat biochemistry chemical reaction carried out in our body or we can say the composition genetics means the uh, we can say the inheritance or we can say the genetic materials physiology means various physiological activities and lastly the cytology or we can say the study of cell okay so now we discuss completely about the systematics next we'll discuss the taxonomy okay please note down next we'll discuss the taxonomy okay first we discuss the systematics now we'll discuss the taxonomy okay taxonomy if we will discuss it is the branch of biology which deals with the identification nomenclature and classification of the organism if we will break the term then we will get taxis and the nomos taxis means arrangement okay and the nomos means laws means arrangement of laws is simply known as your taxonomy if we will go by the definition then the taxonomy means it is the we can say the identification or the branch of biology which deals with the identification nomenclature and classification of the organisms it is the <coughs> branch of biology that deals with that deals with identification identification nomenclature <coughs> and classification of the organisms okay 
the term taxonomy was first coined by ap de candol in the year 1813 the term taxonomy was coined by ap candol in the year 1813 okay <clears throat> the scientific term used for the category is known as your taxo or the taxon the scientific term used for category is taxo or taxon okay so as of now what we discussed that the taxonomy it is a branch of biology that deals with the identification nomenclature and classification of the organisms means suppose we are seeing an organism first what we will do first we will identify it then we will give the name to it with by the means of nomenclature and then we will classify it under a particular category okay next it was terms taxonomy was coined by the ap de candol in the year 1813 okay and lastly the scientific term which is used for the category is taxo means what suppose we are taking the common examples of human being that is your homo sapiens which includes the uh, animalia kingdom animalia okay this one is your kingdom this one is your genus last one is your species okay so these are one one categories or taxon means suppose if you will take the sapiens means this is the taxa at the species level this is the taxa at the species level okay <coughs> means this is the taxa at the species level okay so this is all about your taxonomy next we'll discuss the neo taxonomy new taxonomy new taxo nomi new taxonom <coughs> in the new taxonomy it is the advanced form of the taxonomy which includes it includes we can say the cellular structure the cellular structure the composition the chromosome genetics then the genes etc okay means in the new taxonomy we will have a clear idea or a have a some uh, more data about the taxo or we can say the taxonomy means in the taxonomy simply we uh, help we, it helps in the identification nomenclature and classification in the new taxonomy it have the uh, helps in getting the higher knowledge okay in which we consider some uh, more information means uh, some uh, mean the account into will take some more information such as your cellular structure what is the composition what is the we can say the chromosomes are there what are the genes are present what are the various genetics or we can say discuss the inheritance also. so so this comes under all over your the new taxonomy okay so as of now we discuss the firstly we discuss the taxonomy then we discuss the new taxonomy taxonomy means it is a branch of biology that deals with the identification means first we will identify it nomenclature first we then will give the name and the classification means then we will categorize it under a particular category it is derived from the two words as a taxis nomos if we we'll break the word taxis mean arrangement nomos means the loss or simply we can say the arrangement of the loss the term taxonomy was coined by ap de candol okay in the year 1900 and uh, sorry in the year 1813 and the scientific term is used for the category is called the taxo or the taxon such as we came the uh, take the example homo sapiens homo sapiens means what homo is the genus sapiens is the species and animalia is the kingdom so if we'll take the species then it is the taxa at the species level if we'll take the genus it is the taxa at the genus level if we'll take the kingdom it is the taxa at the kingdom level 
Next we discuss that new taxonomy means it is the advanced form of the taxonomy which includes uh, the cellular structure, composition, chromosomes, genes, the genetics etc. by which we can have a uh, more data or we can say the advanced form of data on the basis of the taxonomy. That is why it is called the new taxonomy. Okay. Please note down. Uh, students, this is all about your assignment. Before going to assignment, uh, please note down one more point that the classes of plants simply are known as a systemic botany. Classes of animals are known as a systemic zoology. Okay, please note down it under the taxonomy. Achha, today we discussed completely about the first we discussed the uh, we discussed the third domain of the life. Okay, that is your eukarya or we can say the eukaryotes. Properly we discussed each and every points. Next, we discuss the systematics, which is the systemic arrangement of the organisms. Next, we discuss the taxonomy, which it is a branch of biology in which it deals the identification, the nomenclature and classification of the organisms. Okay. So, today I am giving assignment that we have discussed all this. This is all about your three domains of life and this is today we discuss the systematic and tox taxonomy. Main difference I will tell you the systematic means it is the uh, we can say the arrangement of the organisms or uh, the systemic arrangement of the organisms on the base of the evolutionary relationship. But taxonomy does not include the evolutionary relationship. It is the branch of biology which deals with the identification only. No, then we give the name nomenclature and classification mean keeping it under, under a particular category. That is it. Okay. So, we discussed today the three domains life, the systematic and taxonomy. Your assignment is try to write the difference between the archae and the eukarya. Important four to five points. Try to write important points, difference between the bacteria and the eukarya. Lastly, you try to write the differentiate between the systematics and the taxonomy. Okay. We will give you, you first of all just try to write how many points you can write, minimum you should write up at least 4 points and maximum how much point you can write it up to you. Uh, don't worry about whatever it may be wrong or right, you first attend to write, okay. We will give the proper difference between uh, these all three, RKV eukarya, bacteria eukarya, systematic taxonomy in our coming classes, okay. So that's all for today, we will meet in our next class. Thank you.